Okay, guys, we should all be able to do this first part, one, two, three, and four. <clears throat> uh, how do we do that? You're going to use the slope formula. And, of course, in order to use the slope formula, you need to uh, label your coordinates x1, y1, x2, y2. So 1, 1, because that's your first point, 2, 2, because that's your second point. And when you plug in your values into your formula, m equals the division. Put the subtractions right there and then plug in your values. So the y2, the top left, is going to be 5. So you put in a 5 right there. The y1 is going to be negative 3. The x2 is going to be 4. And the x1 is going to be negative 2. And of course the minus minus changes to plus plus. So on uh, number 1, on this handout, you get an answer of 8 over 6. Which could be reduced down to 4 over 3. That's your slope. Uh, sometimes you'll get zero on top, you would say that your slope is zero. Sometimes you get zero underneath, you would say your slope is undefined. So you guys could try two, three, and four. <clears throat> also, uh, today we're going to go with uh, graphing this guy right here. Now it's not in function form yet. So to get it in function form, you're going to subtract one, subtract one, and you'll have y equals two-thirds x minus one. This is now in function form, and we used to graph with an xy table, and uh, you plug in three easy numbers, zero always works, and when you think two-thirds times zero minus one, you get a negative one as your output, right? Um, you could also plug in like the value of three, because the denominator of the coefficient in front of x is three, so if you plug in three, it'll work out great, because the, the two-thirds and the three that you plug in will cancel out. Okay, so again, the two-thirds times three, it cancels out. You really end up with a two minus one, and two take away one is one. So if you graph the coordinate zero, negative one, zero on the x, negative one on the y, you'll end up right there. If you graph the coordinate uh, three, one, one, two, three, one, you'll be right there. And, of course, all you need to do now is draw your line right through it. Now, uh, I always recommend three points, but you only really need two to graph a line. So we're finally moving on to uh, finding the slope and the y-intercept of the following lines. Now, I hope you guys remember that the slope is simply rise over run. Okay, So what's the slope here? Your m value is up to the rise from here to here. It actually goes up to over 1. And uh, it also asks for the y-intercept. Now, I might as well tell you this right now. Just the way m refers to slope, there's going to be another variable b that refers to y-intercept. Okay. Now, what is the y-intercept? It's the location of where your line crosses the y-axis. So where does it cross the y-axis? It crosses right there. Now, what value is that? That's the value of 2. Okay, so our slope is 2 over 1, and our y-intercept, which we're going to call b from now on, is 2. Number 7, the slope is down 1 over 3. From this point to this point, you go down 1 over 3. And then the b value, which is really representing y-intercept, well, here's the y-axis. Where does this line cross the y-axis? Right here. What's that location? It's negative 1, 2, 3. So that's negative 3 as the b value. So those are the only things that these questions are asking. However, it's all building up to something, slope-intercept form. We've talked about different forms before. Um, function form is simply having y by itself. So technically, this is in function form. But slope-intercept form is even better uh, because, well, first of all, let's understand why they call it slope-intercept form. Well, your slope is your m value, okay? And your intercept, and we're talking about y-intercept here, that's your b value, okay? So the slope is your m value, the y-intercept is your b value. So let's also jot this down. Slope is really a fraction, rise over run. And yes, it could be going up or it could be going down. The run's always going from left to right. And the b value, once again, is your y-intercept. That is where it crosses the y-axis. Jumping to the next part, it says instead of using the three steps to graphing, 
Step one, rewrite it in function form. Step two, make an XY table. Uh, step three, plot your coordinates. Uh, we can use, so instead of doing all that, we could use this fantastic shortcut of y equals mx plus b. Step one is to rewrite it in slope intercept form, get the y by itself. All right, now sometimes step one will already be done for you. Step two is to graph. You don't even have to make a table. You don't have to do any math. You don't have to plug in any numbers, pull out answers, none of that stuff. You just jump to graphing. How do you do that? Well, you first go to your y-intercept value, which is your b, and then from that point, you rise and run according to your m, okay? Now, I don't know if you guys remember yesterday's lesson. Yesterday's lesson was something like this, y equals mx. We call this direct variation. Direct variation. Okay, now, um, what did we do yesterday? We would put a plus zero right here to help us remember that this is crossing the origin. So, like, let's say we had a y equals uh, one-half x. This is a direct variation equation from yesterday, and we would put the plus zero. That way, when we graphed it, we would be able to go to the origin because of the plus zero that we added on right there. And then all we did was go up one, over two, and then we drawed our line right through it. And that's how we would graph yesterday, right? That's with direct variation. So today it's the same exact thing. The only difference is you're not gonna be putting a plus zero, you're actually gonna have a different value. So what did this plus zero actually help us out with? It helped us out with reminding us that the y-intercept is zero. And today's lesson is about y equals mx plus b, and it's super easy because all you do is go to your b value, and yesterday we had a zero right here, so you would start at the origin, but right here you're gonna have a number. It might be one, it starts at y, y-intercept of one. It might be three, start at the y-intercept of three. It might be negative one, start at the y-intercept of negative one. So you put a dot where your b is at on the y-axis. And then from that point, you go to your m value, which is a rise and a run. So let's try it right here. What is our m value, our m value is two over one, right? And our b value, our y-intercept, happens to be negative three. So what does that really mean? Let's go to our b value first, our y-intercept, it's at negative three, here's the origin, right? If it were a direct variation equation, let's say this minus three wasn't there, we would put a plus zero and you would start at zero. But because this has a minus three, you're gonna go one, two, three, and you're gonna put a dot right here. So I put a dot right there at negative three, that's my y-intercept of negative three. Now from that point, I want to look at my slope. <clears throat> you see, I know my line is going to cross right through this point. It might be crossing uh, like this. It might be going really steep down or super steep down. How do you tell your steepness by looking at your slope? And the slope here is rise to run one. So from this point, you're going to rise two and run one. And you're going to put another dot right there. And you could keep going with the slope, rise two, run one, if you want to extend the line as long as you want, you know? So it's really that easy, guys. You're looking at an equation. If it's in slope-intercept form, all you got to do is go to your b-value, which is your y-intercept. Then from that point, you go up to over 1, and you draw your line. No math involved. Pretty easy. Piece of cake. Number 2 right here. Let's first make sure it's in y equals mx plus b form. You want the y to be by itself, so let's get rid of that one. Let's put the 1 over here. So you have y equals 2 thirds x minus 1. See, it would be pointless to do an xy table, plug in 0, 3. I mean, that's a lot of work, so don't do that. Let's, let's just go with what we know here. The easiest, best way of graphing without a graphing calculator is slope-intercept form. So what's the b value here? The b value is negative 1. What's the slope? It's 2 thirds. So let's go to the b value of negative 1. Now let's put a dot right there. There's a b value, negative 1. Now what do I do from that point? Okay, don't go back to the origin. It's from that point. What do I do? I need to go up 2 over 1, 2, 3. Remember, if it's a positive 2 thirds, you're going up. If it's a negative 2 thirds, you're going down. But the run is always to the right. Okay, we always look at lines from left to right. So we're going to go up 2 over 1, 2, 3, and we're going to put a dot right here. And we have those two dots. We could draw our line now, put some arrows. We graphed it. Super, super easy. And they could ask you other type of questions like this one right here. Write the equation of the line that crosses the y-axis at negative 1. So what are they telling us right here? Cross the y-axis at negative 1. They're telling us the b value, right? b equals negative 1. And has the slope, maybe I should do it red, slope of negative 2 fifths. 
they're giving us the m value. So if they want us to write the equation that has the slope negative two fifths and the b value of negative one, well, you just write y equals mx plus b. What's your m? It's negative two fifths x plus b minus one. There's your equation. Y equals m x plus b. There's your equation. Of course, they could give you a graph, and I believe on the final exam they will give you a graph and you have to actually write the equation. So it's that simple where you look at the graph, you identify your m and your b, and then you just write your equation y equals mx plus b. So let's take a look at this guy. Where does it cross the y-axis? Right there. So our b value happens to be 2. Our b value is 2. Now, how much do you rise and how much do you run? They show you the run and the rise, and remember, it's rise over run, so it's 2 over 1. So the slope is 2 over 1. So our final answer here would be y equals uh, 2 over 1 x plus 2. There's our equation of that line right there. y equals 2 over 1 x plus 2. So it's really easy to write the equations if they give you the graph. All you got to do, guys, it's this simple. All you got to do is find your m and find your b, and then you could write in y equals mx plus b. Let me make this go over a little. So once you find your m and your b, you're good. So what is the m? Well, you go up 2 and you go over 4. So instead of saying 2 over 4, we're going to reduce it to 1 over 2. So there's our slope. Now how about the b value? Well, the b value is this location right here. So the origin's right here, and you went down negative 1, negative 2. So the b value is negative 2. b value is negative 2. So what's your equation? y equals 1 half x minus 2. But the real important part is actually flipping this paper over and being able to graph any type of equation. Sometimes it's already in slope-intercept form. You can see that the m is negative half, the b is 3. The m is negative half, the b is 1. The m is positive half, uh, the b is 1. So on all these, you could see it's really easy to do. Let me just graph number 3 really quick. Where does it cross the y-axis? It crosses at 1. What do I do from that point? I'm going to go up 1 over 2, and I'm going to end up at this new point right here. And then I just draw my line, and I'm good. That's an ugly line, sorry. But you get the idea. It's that easy to graph. Now, some of them will not be in slope-intercept form, so you have to get them in slope-intercept form first, like subtracting 2, subtracting 2. You're going to have y equals 4x minus 3. And now that it's in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, you go to your b value of negative 3, then from that point you're going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, so you have the coordinate 1, 1, and then you just draw your line right through it. <coughs> it's that easy, guys. I hope this helps, and I hope you're able to do this worksheet now in class with the substitute.